Okay, so I thought I'd get my Motorola laptop out because uh, Rez has been contacting me a few times in the comments uh, asking me to try out Retro Diet Pie, uh, which is a smaller build on Retro Pie and uh, it's got a faster boot and uh, looks really interesting. So uh, let's boot this up. So first of all, I would plug in my USB on the back here. There's two USB ports on the back of a lap dock. And uh, I've got a separate video if you want to know more about the lap dock. But then once both of these are on, it will start to boot up. So now I have a totally portable version of RetroPie. I could do this a bit neater and I could use a Bluetooth controller, but I always use my Xbox 360 wireless controller. And I've added a load of ROMs to this. Here you can see my wireless controller. So I've got Amstrad CPC, Arcade, Atari 2600, 7800 and 800, Atari Lynx, Family Computer, Game Gear, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Sega Master System, Mega Drive, N64, Neo Geo, NES, Neo Geo Pocket, Neo Geo Pocket Color, PC Engine, PlayStation, Sega 32X, Sega CD, SG-1000, Super Nintendo, and Vectrex, and Sinclair ZX Spectrum. So loads and loads of things have been added to it. I just wanted to try and see how many systems came pre-installed and ready to go. And uh, But I'm, I'm going to play it on the main screen and do some screen capture. But I'll just boot up the PlayStation 1 and uh, a bit of Ridge Racer. You can hear the sound works through the Motorola. And I love the start of this. It is just really cool. So some things on PlayStation work well, other things not so well. Uh, this part of Ridge Racer works well. The actual game, well I'll go through some of the settings to how I've got to this point. I'll leave it to show some of the intro first, just to show you how well that runs. Because it brings back memories for me. So let's hit start, uh, and you can see all the menus work and everything, but in-game it is a little bit stuttery, you can already hear the audio is not quite right. It does speed up as time gets on, so you know, like through here, it tends to get more like normal speed, but it's not quite there. This was a blisteringly fast game when it first came out. Okay, so I've set it up with my screen capture device now. I'll show you some of the settings I've used to improve the performance, um, but the configuration now is uh, I've got this USB on the go hub, and uh, you can see my controller transmitter is in there, my mouse and keyboard transmitter is in there as well. So boot up is definitely quicker than uh, the ordinary RetroPie, and I'm also using the Alert Seal SD card I used in a speed test recently. But because I've got 27 systems on there, obviously that takes a bit longer. Here we are. And as you can see, it's pretty snappy. Um, you can flick back and forwards with uh, all the systems and uh, when you select one, it goes in pretty quick. So uh, as an operating system, it actually runs pretty well. But I'm gonna quit out and just show you the settings. So quit. Quit emulation station and yes. So I've installed NeoFetch on here. So if I do NeoFetch, So you can see I'm running at 1.1 gigahertz. Let's also go into the config.txt, so sudo nano forward slash boot forward slash config.txt and show you a few things that I've changed. So I've made it 640 by 480 on the menus. I think it was 1080 before uh, because it was defaulting to what my monitor is, but running it at 640 by 480 tends to run it quicker. So I've added these two lines, HDMI underscore group equals one and HDMI underscore mode equals one. So the second bit is the bit that tells it what resolution. And if you go onto the Raspberry Pi documents, you can see you can pick pretty much any resolution from that and then it should boot with that. But lower resolutions tend to be faster. Let's scroll down a bit more and find my overclock settings. So I didn't check, none of these are added by me. Uh, here we go. So uh, I played around with settings and the ones that seem to work best for me, over voltage equals eight, arm frequency equals 1100, GPU frequency equals 500, and uh, SD RAM over voltage equals two, and force table equals one. So let's do control X. I haven't made any changes. And uh, let's type in emulation station. Okay, so PlayStation is about the limits of the Pi Zero, I think, um, and some games work better than others. I thought Driver 2 was okay, nearly playable. There we go, so it doesn't look too bad. Uh, the audio isn't terrible, uh, it is stuttering a bit, but it's not terrible. 
uh, and this was just before GTA did 3D driving around the city, Driver and Driver 2 actually did it very well but then GTA completely uh, rewrote everything. So a bit slow so let's quit out of that. And one game that I did find I thought worked alright was International Superstar Soccer. Maybe it's still a bit slow but it was still enjoyable to play. Oh, I'm going to lose a goal already. Oh. oh. So it is a little bit slow but it's, uh, it is quite playable. Oh, wrong, wrong button. So with PlayStation, it's going to be dependent on the game. So some games are going to play fine, uh, but other games that are a bit more uh, need a bit more resources aren't going to play as well. I still don't know the buttons in that well enough. Let's try a shot from there. <laughs> that was quite a long way out. So Super Nintendo, let's try a bit of F Zero. So when you go with these older systems, much more easy to run, they just run perfectly. The sound is perfect, everything is fine. Nice start by me. So you can see everything running as it should do. Bit of Vectrex. So I put, I basically looked through all the folders that, that showed up, and I'll show the folders in a minute, and uh, I just found a ROM from each system, uh, which I'd had from other builds, and just put them in and just thought I'd give them a try to see what works, and pretty much everything works. So something obviously old and very basic is going to run fine. Where's my, oh, shoot is the X button for some reason. There you go. Uh, I won't play any more of that. So let's go for Amstrad CPC, bit of bomb jack. Nice loading screens. And you can see the speed and everything works really well on this. It runs really well. This is a great game. Audio is a bit weird. Oh, I did need to catch that. There we go, that's good. Let me get them now, we can't get up there. But uh, yeah, great, great game. Bit of the Jungle Book on Game Gear. Obviously uh, very low resolution. And you can see the speed is lovely and fast. The music is great. Did a classic Tetris on the Game Boy. There you go, with that classic music. And still looks all right on the big screen. Bit of Micro Machines on the Game Boy Advance. Game Boy Advance was a good platform and there were loads of great games for it. Oh, <laughs> bit too fast for me. But yeah, runs runs really well. Oh, just. Imagine playing this on a handheld. Oh, <laughs> bit of Aladdin on the Game Boy Color. <sighs> Not the greatest graphics, but the Game Boy Color was also a decent platform. A bit of Mickey Mouse on the Master System. And as you can see, it runs fine as it should. Oh. So N64, I put some on, um, but uh, I figured they weren't going to run too well. But let's try Duke Nukem. Oh yeah, it's already not good. Yeah, so not so, not so great on this. I can't even find the fire button. Oh, must be trigger. So here's Neo Geo. Yeah, that seems to be running fine, doesn't it? Nice and fast. Nice, and there are loads more that work on there, um, but uh, I want to show you just the, the folder structure and where to put the ROMs. So let's quit out of that and shut down. Okay, so this is Twister OS on the Raspberry Pi 4. So let's pop my SD card in that was running RetroPie just to show you where all the folders are. Okay, so we launched the file manager. You can see we've got root and boot. So we need to go into root 
and then home, DietPie, RetroPie, and ROMs. And I put, for the PlayStation 1, I put the BIOS in here. I actually put loads of BIOS files in there. You don't need it for most systems, but I just copied over a folder I had with a load of BIOS files in. But the ROMs, these folders all came as standard. I haven't installed anything extra. So all of these, Amstrad, Arcade, Atari 800, 2600, 5200. So you can see that I've just put a ROM in each one of them pretty much that I could find. Uh, and uh, you don't need to unzip them or anything like that. So let's have a look at where you download this. So I'll put a link in the description for this page, but you need to go to uh, Releases, Assets. So you download this image and then use Raspberry Pi Imager to write it to your SD card. And then all you have to do is put the ROMs where I just showed you and uh, it will boot up. And uh, in my case with an Xbox 360 wireless controller, it recognized it straight away. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.